Hi everyone, it's Nancy. I have a really cute piece of ephemera to make for your Christmas journals. Um, this is it right here. Is this the cutest? Look at this. Oh my gosh, I love this. And you open it up and it's got pretty writing paper in it, okay? And you know what it's made from? Tim Holtz packaging. You know, the packaging that comes that when you buy his uh, products and it looks so cute already on the outside. Well, I came up with an idea on how to make some really cute ephemera, okay? So um, these little houses here are from Amy at Crafty Cat. She cuts, she has a, gl a glow forge machine. A die, some kind of die cutting machine and she cuts out awesome pieces that you can create with for your um, journals and she has an Etsy shop and I will link it below the video but I had bought her set of um, houses they come in all different sizes um, you get black ones and craft colored ones they come in a pack I don't remember how many are in there but like I said check out the shop because I I like the um, black ones I used for Halloween well the other day Amy uh, showed on her channel how she took her craft colored ones with a white gel pen and made them into gingerbread houses and I, right away I stopped everything I was doing got my gel pen out and made this house and then I thought that is so cute and I don't know I, I guess I had some Tim Holtz packaging sitting by me and um, I'm, I just like I got this idea and I just love it and then I said well let me get some of the smaller houses out and I have other packaging from Tim Holtz some of the smaller ones and I thought well let's I've got to show you how to do this now the larger packaging it comes with a a fold over on the larger ones here so um, what I did was I took a piece of acetate real thin acetate I have um, and then I made it I glued the house onto the acetate and then I covered the um, little flip of the uh, piece here this little flip over here I covered it with paper and then this digital look at this isn't this beautiful paper this is from uh, Taylor Made Journals on Etsy, and it is her um, lace papers. There's a set one and two, and um, this set is set two, although you'll probably want both. But look at these papers. Oh, and this is just a little sample of them. I think they're so pretty. See, there, there's the packaging. So we're going to make one, but what I did was I took gesso, and I just sponged it around the edge here to cover up. Um, to add more snow look and to cover up any wording and then um, so I'll show you what to do and I will link like I said I will link Amy down below and I will link Taylor made journals down below for this digital kit okay so let me put this up here and um, I pre-made some gingerbread houses here because it you know it just takes a little bit of time but all I did was take a, a uniball white gel pen and you can get them on Amazon which is where I got them um, and I just was sitting making gingerbread houses I just think they're so precious I love them okay so I thought well a little set of three would be super cute on here and then I have this little packaging and I thought one would look really cute here now on the smaller packages they don't come with the flip so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting a piece of white cardstock the width of this so it's the width of this packaging um, and by two inches scored it in the middle and what we're going to do is glue it on the back so we have a flip here okay so I cut one for this size and then I did cut one already for this size now on this one here I already took my gesso and went around here now you can kind of see the lettering here so um, I would recommend just going over it one more time but um, let's do let's start one here oh and I wanted to show you look how cute this looks on a page in your journal like this is probably the biggest I would go it will fit on a journal page but isn't it pretty oh 
but the smaller ones will look even cuter. Okay, let's get started here. I'll show you. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take our packaging, um, get some gesso. I just have some gesso from uh, Hobby Lobby here. Let me open this up if I can. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze some out here on a paper. And I'm just taking a sponge, piece of sponge. I dip it in the gesso. And then I'm just going over the wording like this. And then, um, there we go. And then I'm just going down the sides again here. Real simple, easy. And if you put it on thin enough, and I'll cover these words here. If you put it on thin enough, it dries pretty quick. And like I said, I think you'll need two coats. I think that's what I did on my first one. Let me do that. Get some more on here. Now you're you're gonna go look for your packaging or any type of pack packaging. It might not have to be, you know, if, if it's not Tim Holtz, but any kind of your packaging. If if you're like me and most of us do save our packaging, we never seem to get rid of it because we can always turn it into a journal card or a piece of ephemera. So, okay, um, let me just, I like, do that. Okay, so now what I do is I would just set that aside to dry and then put one more coat on it. Now this one here, um, I, I, I want to work with this one here. So let me just put a little bit over here on the top and then just a little bit on the bottom here. There we go. See, and then you won't, you won't see any of the words there. Okay. So that would be the first step to do. Okay. And then let me put this over to the side to dry. Um, and like I said, on these, I would just measure the width across by two inches score in the middle. And what we're going to do is, um, let me bring that back. We're going to glue this onto the back here. So let me do that. We can at least get that going. So I hope everybody's doing well. It's so cold. I live in Illinois. It's so windy and cold here. And it's flurrying, but it is so, so cold. <laughs> So I had to run some errands, and I, I had to get my winter coat, my gloves, and my earmuffs. But it's okay. I mean, and then next week it's supposed to be in the 40s here, so for Thanksgiving. Okay. So then we're going to glue that to the back. I still want this to dry a little. So let's do that. I might pause you to dry that, but let me let me see here. And then here's another one I have for this one. I can probably get that glued on and ready too. I can't believe Thanksgiving is next week already. It's coming fast. I hope everyone has a nice holiday. You can be with your family. I hope everybody's well because that virus going around is just not good. Not good at all. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to get that dry. All right. And while that is drying, let me just, we'll talk you through, I'll talk you through some of the other pieces here. So we'll let that dry for now and um, put our houses there. Okay, now the paper, The what I measure for the paper, um, let's cut some paper, get it ready. I put uh, six sheets in there. So I measure this, 
This one here is one, two, three, four, and five eighths, and then I'm going to measure all the way up to the crease. So that would be like five and a quarter. So let's cut some of that while this is drying. I remember that measurement. Okay, so four and five eighths. See if I do this right. Make sure. No, I cut it too short. What am I doing here? Let's see. Did I measure wrong? Betty, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. Welcome. Sorry about that. Okay. Four and yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I cut it way too short. Okay, that's fine. That won't go to waste. So let me do this. Okay. We'll use the smaller pieces maybe for the other one. So four and five eighths by five and a quarter, right? Let's see if I probably could cut through a few here. I mean, you can put as many papers as you want, but I thought six was good. Okay. Let's see if I can cut through all. I think I can. There we go. This make great um, backgrounds for journal cards. Okay, so let's see what I have here. Okay. So I've got those cut. And then my little one. Let's see what the little one measures here. So that's like two and five eighths by four and a quarter. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, two and five eighths, right? Yeah, okay, two and five eighths. And these will just be all good for collaging, make master boards. Two and five eighths by, I think I said four and a quarter. Let me make sure. Sorry, I guess my brain isn't working very well here. Must be the medicine. <laughs> oh, I'll blame something else. Okay, let's make sure that fits. Yeah, that'll be perfect. And then let's get another one here. Okay. All right. So move that out of the way. I think we're good. So we have our paper for our smaller one. And then we have our paper for the big one. Oh, you know what else we need? We need to cut our, um, bind, our acetate. That's what we need. So one piece of the acetate, uh, the same size as your paper. Okay, so let's see here. Um, once again, let me make sure my measurements are good. So four, okay, hopefully I'm doing this right. You know it's hard to see because it's clear and this is five and a quarter, yeah, five and a quarter. So whatever you cut your papers at will be the size of your acetate and then this one <clears throat> I'm going to make more of these. These are just so cute. This one will be the same size as the paper. 
and then four and a quarter. Okay. All right. There we go. Put that one there. I hope I don't lose it. All right. Let's check on these now. Make sure they're dry. Hopefully. Yeah. Pretty well. This one's got a little bit to go. This one looks dry. So let's work with the small one first. All right, let's see now. Okay, I got that on there. All right, so now the next thing I did, okay, um, I took the papers and I was trying to think what's the best thing to do. So the what I thought of, because if you wanted to rip them off and use them, whatever, I what I did was I just ran a real thin line of, glue here to connect them just a real thin line and that's what I'm going to do here oh aren't they pretty real quick I'll try to be quick about this but you know like I always say enjoy the process it's a, it is fun creating isn't it still taping I just want to make sure my yeah okay all right that's just one oh, yeah okay all right so that's what I do for the papers so they're glued together but if you need to take one off I think you could just get it right off oh that one didn't go on very well did it hold on let me get that one back on okay there we go okay then what I did was I glued it in here just put a little line of glue right here okay and then line it up right below the crease and then make sure you're Everything is lined up the best you can, like that. And you see, you don't want to put it up too close because then your flap won't come over. So it has to, you have to do it below the crease. And if you need to trim any off, you can always do that too. But as long as your cover can fold down on there. And see, it's as you can see, it's not quite up to that crease there, okay? All right. Okay. All right, the next thing um, to do is take your acetate and let's see, make sure I, I uh, cut that right. So I'm lining it up. Okay, looks good. Looks good, okay. So what I did with the acetate because it is so slippery is I lined it up and you know what, I'm gonna reach over, give me one minute here. I'm going to reach over and get my tiny attacher. So after I lined up the acetate where I wanted it, all I did was give it a staple on both sides. And it's going to be covered up, so don't worry, on both sides to hold it in place. And hopefully we did that good. Let's check. Here. So now you, you know it's in place. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, so then what I did was I looked in my stash for some trims. Um, let me close this up here. Okay. So on, on this one here, I used a wide trim. And I did, uh, because of that flap and it wasn't white, I did um, sponge that flap too so you wouldn't see any words under here. But since we made our own flap, uh, it's already white. So I just have some trim that I found in my stash. And what I'm going to do is 
glue some trim on here. So let me get my scissors, measure out some trim to go across here. Okay. And then also, I'm just gonna get my bone folder and kind of push that down. There we go. And you can um, you can use fabric tack or you know your glitter glue whatever whatever you want. But this is gonna this is gonna work fine. And then I just put some trim on there. You can put ribbon. I mean, you can you can even use washi tape. So we're gonna glue that there. Yeah, you can even dress it up if you want more color on it. And then the last thing to do, and after I glued everything on here, I put it under a book. And once I put it under a book, everything laid nice and flat. So that's all you need to do. So now your little your gingerbread house goes on there. Isn't that the cutest? So let's put that on. And then we can hopefully work on the other one with the three houses. And the glue will dry clear on the acetate. So once it dries, um, it's really not going to be noticeable when you flip your page over. So don't worry about that. Okay. I'm going to put my little house right here in the middle. And that's, look at that, isn't that the cute? And then I would just glue this, you know, on your page. Um, you know, you could, this, I'm just, this is just a copy dyed page, but, you know, you could glue it there. Or if you have a pretty page, it would look cute on like a printed page. Um, you could stick it in as happy mail. Isn't, I just love this. I would just glue it right onto the page. So here's the little one. And then let's see about working here on this one. Now this one I can kind of see. So let me see if I can cover this up a little more. The words here. I mean, it is going to be covered with the paper, but I mean, if you put it in a journal that you're going to sell or, you know, give it as a gift, you just want it to be as nice as possible, right? All right. <clears throat> so then on this one here, I probably, since it is a little bigger one, I think I would like to use a bigger lace. Let me just give this a crease here with my bone folder. Okay. I probably would like to use this thicker one here I have and these are from um, Hobby Lobby I got these you know look when they're half off see that one and that's already white under there so I don't need to um, add anything else under there so let me just give this a cut here Okay, so that's ready to go. Just kind of dry this off a little bit here. Aren't these sweet? Oh my gosh, I love them so much. And you know, if, if you can't get the houses from Amy for whatever reason, um, I was thinking, why couldn't you just cut the house shape, just a basic house shape out of like a craft card stock or paper? Um, I mean, obviously the windows are cut out here, but you don't you don't have to have that. You could just still use a white gel pen and draw windows and doors and and make your curly cues and everything. You don't have to have cutouts if you're unable to get the houses, but if you are able to get them, it would be fun. But I don't think it's necessary. But they sure are cute, right? So, um, because maybe not everybody is able to get them. Okay, here we go. 
so let me make sure I have my papers the right way because they're almost the same size. Okay, so let's, while that's drying, let's put the papers together here. I just posted a video on my black and white journals. I made two of them using uh, Amy's kits. I love her kits. Um, so check that out if you get a chance. And then I'll be, hopefully, I'm having a couple more smaller, some of my soft covered journals, um, real pretty uh, Chris, little Christmas journals that I plan on making. So hopefully that video will be up next week. I'll have that ready, and they'll. Um, I will have a, at least a couple available for purchase. They make pretty gifts. They really do. I know I would love to receive it. Sometimes, um, people don't want to buy handmade gifts for people that make gifts. Because they think, well, you already ma you make things like that, so why would you want it? But on the contrary, I love everything made by other people. And I would, I would love to receive somebody else's work. I think we, most of us feel that way. Because everybody makes something different and has their own unique style. Okay, we are ready. Okay, so then get that. And remember, don't go up right away to the um, fold. Stay down, make sure everything looks even. And then give that a press there. And then we're going to take our acetate. And we're going to line that up. Make sure I cut it the right way. Okay, that looks good to me. And then I'm going to hold it. Take my tiny attacher. Oops, not quite. I don't think I have it lined up quite yet. That's the thing. Take the time and make sure you're lining it up. I think I'm I think I'm good now. At least I hope I am. Give it a staple. Oh, of course I'm having a hard time with this one, right? <laughs> oh dear. Let's see. Let me try one more time lighting it up. Okay. Fumble, fumble on the videos, right? Not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I'm just trying to see here through my bifocals here what I'm doing. Okay, let's see if I got this right now. Oh, now that didn't go through very well because I've got a funky angle here. Okay, let's try again. Make sure I did that right before I staple the next one. Okay, that's looking good. Okay. All right, there we go. Papers in, the covers on. And I thought, well, how cute would this one be with three houses, like a little row of houses, right? Um. Here, let's glue the um, trim on first. Okay. Where did I put my trim? Right in front of me here. Okay. So let's get that on. Okay. 
There we go. Isn't it pretty? Just pretty, just like that. Isn't it? Oh, my staple is showing, so I gotta cover that up there. Okay. Let me trim a little bit off here. There we go. Okay. I might have to fix that staple, but okay, let's glue the houses on. I'll get the bigger one because I'm going to put that one in the middle. here just put it down carefully because it will slide and just be you know careful not too much glue because you don't want it oozing out <clears throat> and then and then when you're done just put them under a, a book or just you know something a little something that has a little bit of weight on it and for you know a couple hours or just overnight whatever and in the morning they'll be flat flat so they'll be perfect to put in your journals or put in a happy mail but I thought oh look at this so cute with like a a little scene of houses here and they're cute let's get one more on I got this little bottle. I've seen girls using these little bottles for glue, and I didn't know where to get them, but I was in Michael's yesterday down the glue aisle. I hardly ever go to Michael's because I never can find anything I like there, but I saw a package with those bottles, so I thought, well, I'm going to get some and give it a try. There we go. So a nice little village, village there, huh? Isn't that pretty? I'll have to cover my little staple up there too. I'll do that. I'll I'll get a little bit of that snow in all those holes. I mean the gesso. I'll make it put put in the hole there. So, but look at that. Isn't that the cutest? Look at how pretty that'll look on a page. I love it. Simple white with the gingerbread. It's. I mean you could dress it up. You could even. Um, I was 